Hey, hey. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine. I like the poster behind you. Yeah, thank you. There it is. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Why can you tell us about your background and your inspiration to become an actor? Oh, okay. So uh, in, my name is Michael Lombardi. My background, I've been an actor for a very long time now. I studied acting in New York City and uh, then went on to some smaller roles and uh, have had quite a journey. My motivation was I was actually started out as a musician in New York City. I love storytelling. I love music and I love being, uh, you know, having the luxury of being able to be an artist as, as, uh, as my career and as my life. So um I'm very blessed, and uh, it's been a crazy, wild journey with a lot of ups and downs. Sorry. <laughs> In a few words, how can you describe the movie The Retaliators? So The Retaliators is a, is a revenge thriller horror. I would say that it sits on the highbrow side of horror. It touches upon morality, religion, justice, and it's a crazy, wild ride. I had the chance to discover the retaliators last year, and I was completely won over and inspired to write a nice review of this movie that you can read on the poster. Um, I am very lucky to see uh, one of my cut on the US and French poster. Did you expect such an excellent worldwide critical reception of the film? Yeah, you know, I want to thank you so much because you did give us a wonderful re uh, review. And when I saw you were on my list today, for uh, to do this interview, I wanted to start by thanking you actually, because I love that the film resonated with you. You understood it. You said some very smart things. Um, you know, I, when you're making a movie, you have no idea how the film is going to be received. But I think what's really important is staying true to what you read on the page and what you felt. And I think there's a lot of little Easter eggs in this movie. It's a wink at the 80s. I'm very influenced by that with the writers. Our tastes are very aligned. And as an actor, I've learned the number one thing is to rely on the writers. So creatively, as an actor and producer of this and an, and an additional director, I work very closely with the writers to make sure that some of these Easter eggs and some of these these elements that we had in the film made it from the page to the script. That being said, it may not be for everyone and no movie is. So if it is, then it's probably not a good movie. We start in the Spielbergian sort of Dante gremlinsy world. And, yeah. you know, you end up in this crazy Tarantino esque third act. And I think, you know, I even saw Sin City and some, some graphic novel elements to the film. And it's just a crazy wild ride. And a lot of those things. And of course the wink at the eighties with the one liners and, you know, die hard and the, the bad guy being like Terminator is cold as ice yeah. and not saying much, you know, some people might, go oh the bad guy should have had more levels or more dynamic or more this but we wanted him that way because that's how our favorite films of the 80s were yeah. so yeah there's a lot of things but but you know you received it and understood it and some others have so that's what it's about which were your source of inspiration to create your character bishop what did you bring to this character and give him a real human death what do you have in common with him Yeah, you know, I think, you know, as an actor, you have to find elements of yourself in every character. So you find the things that you can attach to and you find as ifs or, or ways to attach to things that maybe are something you would never do. But you have to find a way to react truthfully in that imaginary circumstance. So when I read on the page, the writers put in John Bishop uh, uh, doing a sermon in church in this small town. He's a rock star in this environment. And I said, okay, I get it. Within his community, he's opened arms. He's a fun loving guy. He's uh, it was, so, so I went to sermons, real life sermons to, to, to modern day sermons that have bands and different things in them to embrace that and get an understanding. And then, um, you know, and then I found some other characters and some ways I am in my own life that could relate to this guy. He's a charming guy. He's funny. He's there. He's open. Um, He's sweet. He has different elements like that. And then to go to the dark places. Now, you have to understand if you have a child, a small child, you could relate to this topic. It's retaliation. It's revenge. It's as old as Shakespeare writing about love. Right. It's like a, it's it's the oldest story in the book. And you have to be able to tap into that. So I found some incredible YouTube videos that showed a guy in, in, in a court case addressing his son's killer and this primal 
he was like, looked like a mathematician, a small guy and this primal animalistic instinct came over him and he jumped at the guy. So it's different, um, different elements of that. Find, I remember being a young child and wondering, oh my God, if someone ever hurt my parents and you know, what would you do? So all these different elements and that, and then putting myself in that circumstance of something happening to one of my loved ones. Um, so you find these, you did a lot of homework and just sort of put it all in there and then you go. Which was the most difficult scene for you to play in this movie? Yeah, you know, when you say that, I think of um, there's a few difficult scenes, actually, for me to have played. I think when I'm confronted and you have that question of what would you do, that provocative question, if you had a minute alone with the person who killed your loved one. But then looking at the human in the eyes and the hatred that you would feel, but then having morality. And can you really hurt a human being? You know, like, can you like poke a human being's eye out or 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 really do that? So that was a that was a challenge um, being faced with that. But, you know, there were also a lot of different scenes being a producer and, 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 and an additional director on the film that I watched or worked on that were hard watching other actors do and being like, wow, like, I don't want to give a spoiler alert away. But, you know, what, what my sort of daughter goes through and, you know, watching some of that was very intense and very difficult. What can you tell us about your collaboration on this film, the directors Samuel Gonzalez Jr. and Bridget Smith as an actor, but also as a producer? Yeah, you know, I think what was wonderful about those two is they, they, both, they both brought so many... Uh, such strong elements, you know, Bridget Smith sets a wonderful warm tone on set, you know, an actor needs to be able to feel comfortable to jump off that ledge and do these crazy things. And she was very, very wonderful at the story and talking to both myself and Mark Menchaca, who carry a lot of the story of the film and doing those scenes where Samuel Gonzalez is great too, but he also, he's so hyper stylized. Like if you're drinking through a, a, a glass of water, he'll want to shoot up through the glass of water into your eyeball. So you see an image of a machete or something, you know, like he's wonderfully hyper stylized. So I think the two elements mixed very nicely be, and that doesn't always work, but I think that we were very, um, conscious of this and our editor, Randy Bricker, who I sat in the editing room with, he, he's also a very, a uh, story driven guy. He started out on the apprent on the firm. He was an apprentice on the movie, the firm an apprentice editor with Tom Cruise. I am legend. And then he also ended up directing the Halloween franchise. And now he's the first number one top editor editor on the Chucky series. So this guy had horror and story, and it was really important to combine those two and make this very fluid and intense with the extra stylized elements, but yet the story elements. What can you tell us about the importance of the music in this film? The music is everything. I mean, yeah. music, you know, picking it, it supports a scene so much. It can take away from a scene or support a scene. I think it adds to the wild journey. This music in particular, the rock, the metal, it mm -hmm. lends itself. It jumped off the page to me when I read it, it the music that this, this film was starving for it. Um, so I think it's a tremendous part. And then on top of all that, we were fortunate enough to get the Stranger Things guys, Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein, to score the movie. And again, with that 80s vibe and that 80s feel we were going for, that was our top choice. So with all these incredible musicians in the film, but also on the soundtrack and then adding in the Stranger Things guys, uh, you know, for me, it was just a home run. Which directors would like to work with and why? Um, you know, there there are so many different directors. I, I, I mentioned Spielberg at the beginning is such a legend, you know, and like the way the opening is. And I mean, these are just dream legends. It's very easy to, to list the, uh, the, 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 the most obvious ones, Tarantino. Oh, my. I love his films. And we're so influenced by those movies like me and the writers. And that, as I said, our taste buds sort of our tastes and our creativeness being being aligned in that manner. And there's winks of those Death Wish, um, you know, all those great Charles Bronson films, Clint Eastwood, I love. Um, yeah, so for the obvious ones, those, those are the guys, those are sort of my heroes and what I grew up on. I told you I'm very influenced by the 80s and 90s. So uh, a lot of those guys have been my heroes. In watching your movie, I thought about the Punisher Marvel Comics character and also about Ash on Evil Dead, about the transformation of a good man in a true warrior. You are perfect on this film and deliver such great interpretation. Which impact has this movie on your career actually? 
um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the last part? Okay, uh, which you are perfect on this film and deliver a such good interpretation. Which impact has this movie on your actual career? Because the movie is excellent, you are great on this movie. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate your words. I, I just uh, did, did in, in your question, preparing for the character or the scene, I just didn't get the last part and I apologize again. Get put it in a different way. Like, how did I prep or did I okay. like it? After this movie? Yeah, after. After the movie, yeah. well, I think a lot of critics like to work on this movie. Yes, so thank you. have a very huge impact for your next career. Yes? Ah, so yeah. I think it can help. And what, how do you see this movie in your career? As a pick? As a snake? Oh, thank you so much again for your words. You know, in terms of my career, hopefully this helps. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, hopefully people enjoy the film. You always hope for the best, you know, and you want, I just love, and I'm so blessed being able to, uh, to have made a life as an artist and an actor. And I love this role so much. And I have to tell you, the writers and I have a sort of trilogy written because yes. <laughs> It's such a passion project for us. So yes. it's not something that we're like, oh, we hope, you know, we're ready to cash in on this. It's we want to tell the story, you know. So so we have some a really crazy part two ready to go. And hopefully we're, we're able to do that. And I can revisit this character and have some fun again on it is the bottom line right now for me. One step at a time, you know. <laughs> Do you have some words to say to your French audience uh, that you were encouraged to go to see the movie? You know, I just want to thank you again for your kind words, and I hope that you can go and enjoy this film. And I think and I hope you think that it's the kind of movie where you can go to it and you'll have fun and be scared, but you can also have a cocktail afterwards or have dinner and be able to talk about the story a little bit and talk about these the subject matter and sort of be on the fence one way or the other with these topics of morality, religion, or justice. So hopefully it makes an impact and it's a fun film Film, but will also make you think a little bit. Which advice would you give to someone who would like to become an actor? I think you have to really love it. I think that you have to feel like you can't do anything else but be an actor because I think you're going to be up against a lot of challenges, not only at the beginning, but throughout the whole journey. Every day um, is, is difficult. Every month, every year, you don't know what your next project is. You don't know where you're going. And I think people don't understand also. And again, look, there's a lot of professions. You know, my father, I came from nothing. My dad's a hardworking guy, you know, who, who, but it's, it's labor intensive and you have to have a work ethic. It's not, they're long, days on set but they're long days to get to set i almost look at it the job is in between movies when i get the job that's the vacation to me and <laughs> when i get get on that set or get on that tv show and let me tell you like i said on this one 12 hour days of filming and producing it just never stops but you have to love it that's the number one thing and my last question what are your current projects so I just wrapped a film a few weeks ago. It's a romantic comedy. It was really fun to shoot. I, it was such a difference from this. I got to be, you know, play, f have fun. I mean, I had fun in this, but in a different way, my character. And uh, Tom Berenger plays my dad in the film, who's incredible. The guy's been uh, in 89 feature films and nominated for Academy Awards. So he was sort of like a hero. So for him to play my father in the movie was incredible. And then uh, Jamie Lee from Ted Lasso is in the film. And another great actor, John Heater, Napoleon Dynamite's in the movie, among others. So it was a blast. That's the, I just wrapped filming that. And, you know, right now I'm just seeing this retaliators get across the finish line we're coming to theaters september 14th and then we'll go to streaming and um digital and then hopefully you know like i said if the movie does well we'll be able to do another one thank you Mikael. have a great day bye-bye so much take care bye-bye thank you again bye -bye. for everything bye-bye